Yesterday, Microsoft shocked the gaming world by announcing they are acquiring industry juggernaut Activision. How will this affect Sony with their games in the future, and how will PlayStation respond? Plus, Horizon Forbidden West releases in less than a month, and Guerrilla today released a new story trailer with the best look at the game yet. And the PlayStation 5 just got its first officially licensed fighting controllers. All this and much, much more in today's edition of the Saltiest PlayStation News Report. Let's get into it. What's up, PlayStation Nation? Welcome to the Saltiest Gaming News Channel, your number one source for PlayStation news and rumors. Before we get into today's first story, if you're here for the first time, welcome. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can stay up to date with all things PlayStation and PlayStation 5 in today's first story. Yesterday, Microsoft shocked the gaming industry by acquiring publisher and industry giant Activision, the troubled publisher of the Call of Duty series World of Warcraft, and Diablo and more. The deal will cost Microsoft around 68.7 billion. That's with a B, far in excess of the 26 billion Microsoft paid to acquire LinkedIn in 2016, or the 2 billion they paid for Bojang, or recently the $7.5 billion they paid for Bethesda. If you were wondering how much Microsoft has the flex with, they're currently worth $2.299 trillion. So they have money to spare or the richest companies in the world so them spending 70 billion for activision was kind of a drop in the bucket when it comes to how much money they have on hand in the grand schemes how does this affect sony going forward well obviously the question is what games will microsoft be putting as exclusives activision's main franchise is call of duty they just released vanguard did not do that well critically or commercially microsoft plans to add many of activision's games into xbox game pass some of the popular franchises that activision blizzard has is warcraft diablo overwatch call of duty and wait for it candy crush bill spencer says upon close we will add and offer as many activision blizzard games as we can within xbox game pass and PC. PC Game Pass, both new titles and games from Activision, Blizzard's incredible catalog. Don't get too antsy on when that's going to happen because the deal won't be closing until fiscal year 2023, so it's going to be a while. So how does this affect PlayStation? Obviously, there's going to be some issues with exclusivity and whether or not Microsoft is going to keep COD as an exclusive. In my opinion, when you're flexing this kind of coin, it kind of takes it up a notch from the $7.5 billion that they spent on Bethesda. When you're spending 70 billion dollars you need to get your return and call of duty has been a multi plat for its whole lifespan so in my opinion i don't think that that changes at all i think games like overwatch and call of duty will stay multi plat now don't get me wrong this is huge it changes a lot in the gaming industry and this moves closer and closer to consolidation a few big entities controlling game development in the industry i tweeted about this because people like marlin gaming nation shout out to him man this this is definitely not a knock on him, but he was talking about how Microsoft can afford to buy every single one of the companies that Jeff Keighley was talking about when it comes to the publishers that are left in the industry. And he said that Microsoft is the new gatekeeper. It's the Xbox 360 all over again, and that we should celebrate Xbox. I responded simply, consolidation of the gaming industry should be celebrated. Buying two whole publishers and edging close to horizontal merging should be applauded. Now, nah, this approach will lead to stagnation of the game industry and will squash the little men if you guys aren't following me on twitter make sure to hit that follow button so essentially in my opinion the way this is headed with consolidation it will lead to stagnation of the gaming industry in the sense that the smaller markets the individual indie developers that push creativity and imagination will kind of be stomped out or acquired immediately because when these publishers are snatched up it just limits the options that people have when they go to work at certain places and i just think overall at the the end of the day when all these publishers are snapped up in this consolidation war or this publisher buying spree or developer buying spree i think at the end of the day it will hurt the gaming industry because like i teased in the intro sony will have to respond to this i don't think there's 
any way that they can't. They've taken a different approach to expansion. They've developed and fostered relationships with smaller developers, and then that led to acquisitions. Some of these examples are Bluepoint, you had Insomniac, stuff like that. Not buying whole publishers, but developers, they have made a lot of moves. They made a lot in 2021, but I think eventually they're going to be forced to do something more. So expand outwards. Some of the companies that are left are Electronic Arts, valued at 38.88 billion. Take Two, who's responsible for GTA at 18.23 billion. You got Bandai Namco, Ubisoft, Konami, Square Enix, Capcom. And in my opinion, I think it would be the smartest for PlayStation to make a deal with some of the Japanese companies like Capcom and Square Enix, since there's a great relationship there culturally and business-wise, and it wouldn't break too much of the bank. When thinking about that, because when this news hit, Sony's stock dropped and they took a $20 billion hit. And just to give you an idea, they could have bought Take-Two Interactive and had some money left over with that drop. So this is big time, it's big important. It should be interesting to see how PlayStation responds. I do expect them to respond. I think it's an inevitability at this point. I think Sony is doing fantastic with the PlayStation 5. They have huge games coming out this year and they're still a bigger company than Microsoft despite their acquisition of Activision in terms of how big they are and valued in the gaming industry. To give you an idea of how this works, Nico Partners, Daniel Ahmad provided figures for the year ending April 21 and Sony was valued at 22.67 billion when it comes to the gaming industry and Microsoft was valued at the time at 13.83 billion. If you combined both Blizzard and Microsoft, that put them at about 21.9 billion, which is still behind Sony. So I don't think Sony is panicking at this point, but they're taking notice for sure. And I expect them to make a response. But what do you think of Microsoft acquiring Activision? What do you think is going to happen with games like COD? How do you feel about consolidation in the gaming industry? And how do you think Sony will respond? Let's talk about it. In other news, Horizon Forbidden West comes out in less than a month, and I couldn't be more excited. Well, today we were blessed with new information regarding the campaign, and we got some awesome new footage when it comes to the game. Also, on the official PlayStation blog, they posted some new key art pitting Aloy's crew against Regala for Rebels and some of the most dangerous machines the West has to offer. It also featured Skylands, Hikaru, and the chief of the Tenic tribe, and Tilda, a mysterious new character with special connection to the ancient past. After watching this trailer, this game just looks incredible, flat out amazing. Amazing. It is just face melting the way the graphics look and the way this game is shaping up to be with all the improvements made on the old game taking it to the next level. This game is going to be nominated for game of the year without a doubt. It's going to sell gangbusters. And it's going to be a huge beginning of 2022 for PlayStation. I will post the full trailer link in the description. Make sure you go and check that out. Let me know what you're most excited for in Horizon Forbidden West. What's the first thing that you're going to be doing with Aloy. Let's talk about it. And finally, in the last bit of news for all you guys that love fighting games, which I'm not one of those. I play them, some of them. Let's just be honest. I play Mortal Kombat and that's about it. Okay. So I'm not really a fighting fan, but PlayStation officially announced that it got its first licensed fighting controller. Ori's new fighting controller and stick are coming to the PlayStation 5 soon. Ori announced a new fight stick for the PlayStation 5. And if you're wondering, it's going to set you back about $200 for the bigger fighting stick the fighting stick alpha for the PlayStation 5 199.99 MSRP and there's another option which is the fighting commander OCTA which will be $59.99 there's no word on when pre-orders will go live PlayStation is setting itself up to be the home for fighters it recently bought Evo which is a esports type environment with lots of tournaments when it comes to to fighting games they released the latest street fighter as an exclusive and if things go maybe right we'll see if they buy capcom which has the rights to street fighter and put some new fighters on the platform i think this fighting stick will go awesome with some of the games that they're going to be releasing on the playstation 5 in the coming years so what do you guys think of playstation 5's first official licensed fighting controller are you going to pick one of these up for 200 bones and are you a fighting 
gamer. Let's talk about it. But anyway, that's it for today's edition of the Saltiest PlayStation News Report. I hope you guys enjoyed it, enjoyed making it. If you guys are new to the channel, it's your first time, make sure to subscribe, hit the bell icon so you can stay up to date with all things PlayStation and PlayStation 5. I hope you guys have a great day. Have fun gaming, and as always, stay salty, my friends.